Hi, everybody. Welcome into Sports Talk Chicago. Great to see everybody here with us. Um, such a special show here tonight. We're announcing all of our new affiliates and our syndication network. You can see all of our affiliates right there near the top of our screen. Hit them all up today. We're very excited to be debuting this weekend at WKAN and Kankakee 105.5. The ticket um, down in Wilmington. And, of course, our existing partner, Cities 92.9 FM, WJOB, Gent TV, and ACTV. Um, you can follow us all over at Sports Talk Chicago. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. And tonight, we have a huge special guest to kick off today's show. He is the former head coach of the Washington Commanders, a former NFL quarterback, and a Super Bowl winning coach back in 2002. Please welcome Coach Jay Gruden to the program. Coach, it is great to have you on. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, great to have you here. Um, there's been so much going on with Commanders and Bear stuff. We're going to get to both. There's been a little bit of a crossover, and that's where I want to start here today. What's your take of the Bears' trade for Montez Sweat? Well, I think the Bears got a heck of a deal. You know, Montez Sweat's a good player. We traded up for him when I was still with the Washington Redskins at the time. Um, we traded up to get him. We needed a pass rusher. And what we liked about Montez was his ability to run. And this day and age, there's so many good young athletic quarterbacks that you got to have defensive ends, defensive linemen that can run. He can track them down and make some plays. He's not the most gifted natural pass rusher, but he gets away with a lot of things because of his length and his speed. What did you think about the Bears giving up a second round pick for him, knowing that as of today, at least, there's no extension in place? Yeah, that, that's odd to me uh, personally. I, I don't. I, I think they must have a deal in place. I would think with the agent of Montez Sweat. It just seems odd for me to give up a second round pick this late in the season for a player that you could only have for eight games. Uh, you know, second round picks to me, I, I really cherish my draft picks. I, I, you know, my first year in Washington, we lost our first round pick for the RG three trade, and and just watching all those first rounders go was like it was painful. I love to have draft picks, and they're very. Crucial, but if they can get Montez signed to a long-term deal, then it's worth it because in the second round, I don't think you can get a pass rusher the caliber of Montez Sweat, especially as young as he is, too. How much of an impact do you think he'll make? Obviously, the Bears this year are struggling, but even looking towards the future, how big of a piece of this defense do you think he'll be? A big piece because, like I said, he can run, and he's, he's stout enough to stop the run. So, you know, and he's got great durability. He's got great flexibility. Um, he's a smart kid. And he plays extremely hard. So, you know, when you're young, you're big, and you can run, you should be able to have an impact on a defensive lineman's roster, on a defensive lineman's team. We've got Coach Jay Gruden here with us on Sports Talk Chicago. Huge guest. Great to have him here with us. Coach, let's talk about the Bears as a whole right now. You've seen them play so far this season. What do you make of how they're looking? Well, you know, they're up and down because the quarterback position is up and down. They've had some injuries, some key players. Uh, the secondary was, you know, in disarray for a little bit because of the injuries. Khalil Herbert got hurt. Justin's been hurt. It's hard to have continuity with injuries to keep positions in your best players. So uh, Justin is the big one. You know, he's got to stay on the field for them to grow and for them to succeed in the future, in my opinion. Obviously, the Lions got to continue to get better. Uh, another blocking tight end would be great. The running game's got to continue to improve. Uh, DJ Moore having a good year. Got to get Moody more involved. Uh, defensively, they stop on the run pretty good. They don't rush a passer extremely well. That's why they got sweat. Linebackers are solid with Edwards. Uh, you know, they're, they're playing well. They're just, you know, the quarterback position is where it's at. That's where the that's where the money's made. And right now, the quarterback position has been too up and down for them to have too much success. Do you think Justin Fields is the guy for this Bears future? Well, it's hard to tell. He's missing games. And last year he did some, he had some splash games. It was very exciting for Bears fan. He'd rush for 150 yards and throw for 250. I mean, it's hard to do as an NFL quarterback, but to have to sustain that success and have the consistency to do that, that's what Bears fans are looking for. And that's what Justin Fields has to prove that he can do. He's young. He's still developing. He has a skill set, but we have to see it in a consistent week to week basis, or at least, 10 to 12 games out of 17 nowadays. You know, it's hard to maintain that type of level for an entire season in the NFL, but, you know, we still need to see it on a consistent basis. How do you know when to move on from a quarterback? You've done this before in Washington. You also helped draft a quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. How do you know when to move on, or what are the warning signs that show, hey, we might want to move off this guy and go some other way? 
You know, that's a great question, especially with a young quarterback as talented as Justin. I, I don't know the answer to that because I'm not around him. You know, I think the more you're around a player in the building and at practice, you can see, is he developing? Is he getting better? Or is he making the same mistakes over and over again? Can you trust the player? Is he, does he love football? And that's what I don't know. If you find a guy that doesn't put the work in, is not getting better and better, then I think it's time to move on. Let him get a different scenario. Based on what you've seen in watching Bears games and watching him play, I mean, should the Bears keep him? Because you have to remember, too, and I'm sure you know this, we're talking about the Bears potentially having a couple of first-round picks, uh, money and extension talks are going to be coming up, too, entering his fourth year. This is a weird situation. What would you do if you were a part of it? Well, it's a, you know, like I said, I'm not around him at all. I don't know him personally. I don't know what kind of work ethic he has or what he's doing at practice, how he's, you know, relate to the players. Does he motivate other players? Does he make people around him better? I don't know that about Justin. What I see on the film and what I see on just only what I can see, I would look to if I had a high draft pick, possibly, you know, drafting another quarterback personally. But if I saw that he was really doing great in practice, was a great leader, bringing people along with him, then I would keep Justin Fields because he has a he has a great skill set. We just haven't seen it on a consistent basis. So you faced a similar situation when you inherited RG3, then moved on to Kirk Cousins. How did you handle the decision to eventually move on from RG3 and then institute Kirk Cousins to be the new QB1? Yeah, that was tough. You know, we tried everything we could to get RG3 going. It just didn't work out. And the more you're around uh, Kirk Cousins and RG3, you see them side by side, throwing in practice, uh, going against the defense. I think it was pretty clear to everybody involved that Kirk Cousins was more ready to lead the football team and help us win football games more so more so than RG3 at that time. You know, I hated to do it, but uh, Kirk was very, very good, very accurate, had a great skill set mentally, uh, physically was pretty tough. And uh, we just decided to go that route. And it wasn't just my decision. I think it was a unanimous decision amongst everybody in the building. How did you manage that situation? As somebody, you know, on the inside, helping to make it, how did you manage all the fallout that came from it, whether it be publicly or even inside the building? Yeah, I got destroyed pretty good for that one. You know, so, <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, I was a head coach at the time. And, and that's what head coaches have to do. They have to make tough decisions like that but they have to be for the betterment of the football team. There's no personal issues there with me and RG3. Uh, I didn't like Kirk better as a person or any of that stuff. I played the better person who I thought fit our system well and would help us win games more. We tried to adjust our system for RG3, gave him every opportunity to be successful, but at the end of the day, given the same opportunity, uh, Kirk Cousins was just better at that time. You said something very important, and I think it's something that bears brass – maybe has failed at doing in the past couple of years, adjusting your system to the quarterback. What did you do specifically for RG3 to try and have him fit in better? Well, when I first got the job, I hired Sean McVay to be offensive coordinator because he was he was here under the Shanahan's. And they, obviously his rookie year, he was pretty dang good. So I wanted to hire Sean because I was with Sean before in Tampa and I had him in the UFL, so he knew my system pretty well. So we implemented, implemented a lot of the Shanahan stuff that RG3 was really good at. And then I brought some of the stuff that I like from Cincinnati and obviously from Tampa. So uh, we tried to do some of the similar things. In fact, we changed some of our some, some of my terminology to fit what was what RG3 liked to make him more comfortable. Uh, just didn't work out. RG3 got that injury his rookie year and uh, wasn't quite the same athletically, I guess. And at the end of the day, Kirk just handled a lot of the passing game a lot better than RG3. So what's the key to developing a quarterback? Because Kirk didn't have the best rookie year, but obviously improved as things move forward. How did you turn him into what he is today? A lot of Kirk really worked hard and Kirk was a naturally gifted passer as far as accuracy goes. Now Kirk had to uh, really process the information and he really worked at it extremely well. And it's really up to the player. It's up to the coach to get to know the player, but really see how they process information, how they can handle adversity, um, how they handle pressure, which is a big thing. You know, when you get the pass rushers, can you avoid it? Can you step into your throws? But overall, it's just a matter of understanding the concepts, the plays, the defenses, the blitzes, how to protect yourself. There's a lot on the quarterback's plate. And whichever quarterback can handle that on a, on a daily basis and continue to add more to his plate will be more successful. Kirk, really, despite being a fourth-round pick, he just continued to learn and gain information from the Shanahan's. And when I got the job, he was never really too like 
it's all about me. He just continued to learn, kept his mouth shut and when he got the opportunity. And that's a big thing. When you get your opportunity and the limited reps you have, you better dominate them. And Kirk did that. How did you approach becoming the Washington head coach? Because when you came in, things were kind of all over the place and you led the team to some winning seasons. How did you approach that? And how did you uh, attain your success early on? Well, when I first got there, we weren't very successful. We uh, had a rough year. You know, we, we inherited a team that was, I think, 3-13. and 13, And my first year, he was the RG3 deal. And I think he got hurt a little bit. We played Kirk Cousins. We played Colt McCoy. Kirk struggled a lot uh, as a, my first year in Washington. We actually went to Kirk Cousins, back to RG3, back to Kirk. We, we had a swinging door. And then the second year, we 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 – put an end to it after OTAs and, and training camp. We just figured that Kirk Cousins threw the ball, had the best training camp, had the best OTA session, had the best understanding of the offense. So we named Kirk Cousins a starter and we went nine and seven and went to the playoffs. But there's a lot of adversity, a lot of tough things you have to go through as a coach. I know coach Ebert Flues is going through some things right now. Um, <laughs> it's not easy, but uh, you got to stay the course and stay true to who you are and do the best you can and try to motivate the players and bring the best out of them. And uh, unfortunately, after five and some odd years, uh, did work out for me. Quarterbacks were a main issue. We signed Alex Smith. He got hurt. And uh, after Alex Smith got hurt, it was pretty much the end. How difficult is it for a coach to last when he doesn't have a quarterback or doesn't it's have impossible. key pieces? It's impossible. You, you, the quarterback position is 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 more important than the head coach, in my opinion. If I had my choice, if I was an owner and I could get – the best head coach or the best quarterback. If I get Patrick Mahomes or the best head coach out there, guess who I'm going to take? Patrick Mahomes. There's no doubt about it. And when you lose that position like we did, we lost Kirk Cousins to free agency, and then we went out and got Alex Smith, and then he broke his leg. And then my backup, Colt McCoy, who I, who I loved, he broke his leg as well. That's pretty much – that's when the sink – that's when the ship sinks. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jay Gruden, Coach Jay Gruden here with us on Sports Talk Chicago. Do you have any advice for Coach Matt Eberplus here in Chicago? Uh, you know, it's his second year now. Obviously, a lot of things are going on. When it, when it comes to internal stuff, there are things happening. Coaches are resigning under mysterious circumstances. The on-the-field play is not going well. Do you have any advice for him in terms of trying to control this situation? Yes, you have to you have to stand up and face it. You know, you can't hide from you can't hide underneath the rug. You got to face the issues because they're going to be brought up nowadays with social media and everything. Um, you have to challenge your players to stay focused on the job at hand and continue to motivate them because that's what it's all about. Behind closed doors, you have to continue to be a leader and stay focused on the job at hand. And that's whoever you play next, period. And then you also have to address some of the issues that they have with the coaching staff. Say, here's here's what happened. Here's why we did it. Let's move forward and and let's go beat whoever we're playing. So uh, you got to prepare hard. You got to practice hard. You got to try to eliminate outside outside noise, but stay true to who you are. How did you eliminate that outside noise? Because I'm sure it got pretty noisy your first couple of years in D.C. and even near the end too. It was always noisy. It was always noisy. <laughs> and, and you're right. And, you know, you have to go up to the press conference. You have to have a little bit of understanding of what's going on around you, what the noise is, so you can address it to the media properly and and just try to stand up and tell the truth. You know, you, you got to tell a few white lies here and there, but uh, you got to just you got to face it because that's what you get paid to do. You know, it's, it's not for everybody. It's a it's a unique job. It's a one of a kind job. I loved every minute of it, but the pressure is pretty brutal at times. But I actually liked it. You know, I, I liked facing some of the adversity. I mean, it's never going to be a perfect, perfect day in pro football. You know, that remember my first when I first met Bill Parcells, he says, and when I first got the job, he goes, Jay, just remember this. Every day there's going to be at least five things you didn't count on happening. And <laughs> he's exactly right. I mean, there's whether it's injuries, trainer, coaching staff, a player issue being late, whatever it might be, something always comes up and you got to handle them. You got to deal with them.